record. Hey everybody, welcome to What Drives Us, episode 390 for November 11th, 2020. My name is Russell Frost and I have the pleasure to be your host this week with this amazing panel. Let me introduce them and get this show on the road. Co-host number one, my friend, Mr. Tony Schaefer. Hey everybody, um, I don't know, it's November 11th, it'll be Friday the 13th in a couple of days and um, that's it. That's just what October 2020 Fest. needs is a Friday the 13th. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> it all yeah. started with one. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you That's go. It. Let's let's talk to my alternate, my other co-host, uh, our friend from Northern California, Georgia McKenzie. Hey, beautiful people. Welcome to November. Oh, wait, we already did the welcome to November. <laughs> welcome to post- Something that happens in the first week of November, bliss. <laughs> Join me for a good cup of decaf. A little too much caffeine, yeah, in this last uh, week has, yeah, not been beneficial. Uh, our friend in the Mid-Atlantic region, Mr. Casey Green. Happy Veterans Day to all the veterans. Thank you for your service. Absolutely. Well said, Mr. Is. Green. Yep. Also, uh, it's a remembrance day, right, Mike? You just ruined it for me, Casey. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for stealing this thunder. That's right. I'm sorry. Uh, it happens. American bastard. A lot. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of Remembrance Day, let's introduce our friend from Canada, Mark Conlon. Yeah, sure. Now that everyone knows it's Remembrance Day, come on. <laughs> Who's got the poppy? That That's what yeah. I want to know. Who's got uh -huh. the poppy? <laughs> Oh, do you I have thought maybe that year. You do have yeah, a poppy, you, don't you? Your mm -hmm. your car is a satellite dish. I can, uh, <laughs> <laughs> very nice, very nice. Well, he may not have a poppy, but he does have a fine T-shirt on. Our friend from the Northwest, Mr. Patrick Connor. Hello. Yes, and uh, Mark might be in Canada, and I'm in Oregon. But we figured out earlier today that I'm actually farther north than he is. Patrick's yeah, a northerner. Is crazy how does that work i don't understand it blows my mind <laughs> so hey everybody out there uh we are here to talk about alternative transportation uh, i'm an ev driver but anything you can do to reduce your carbon footprint it's all good here absolutely yeah. um i want to shout out to my friends i'm finally not fat enough to wear this shirt so scott jay ron manny thank you I'm so happy. This shirt makes me happy. So cool. And uh, it's a band called the Miss Allens from Fresno. You can find them on, uh, by the way, on streaming music services. Their music is awesome. And you should uh, sign up and listen to their music a lot so that they get like seven cents or something because God knows they deserve it. I'm sure you could even get it from CD Babel. Baby. <laughs> I, this is a problem with Patrick's mic. Is he's cutting it out? <laughs> Maybe we should just. It, what's this eject button that I have here? Should I click on you? <laughs> you know what else you could do? You could like play their music while you sleep. Just have it on repeat. <laughs> I got nothing. Let's, uh, speaking of the evil Patrick Connor, let's go to him for our very first story, which is not evil. That's right. It is not. So um, this uh, is something that I found on the Jefferson Public Radio website, and it's about a national e-mobility equity conference coming. What is an equity conference? Let me read you just the two little paragraph blurb they have here. Communities of color often bear more exposure to air pollution from living closer to pollution sources. So it would help to get the, such communities served by more electric transportation, which does not emit local air pollution. But the same uneven distribution of pollution comes with an uneven distribution of wealth, making it harder for people in these areas to obtain EVs. The National E-Mobility Equity Conference looks for ways to level this field and it is co-sponsored by the Oregon-based Fourth and EV Noir. There you go. 
So this conference starts tomorrow and it's a virtual conference. Uh, you can, uh, we'll have the, the link to the event in our show notes, I'm sure, and you can check it out tomorrow. There you go. So you should attend and lend a voice, I guess. Is this, or is it just watching the presentation? Do you know, um, Patrick? I, I, I'm pretty sure they'll have Q&A sections, um, if, if not uh, actually uh, live like this, or um, at least in, in text form. Okay. I haven't actually attended this one. Um, I am going to check it out, especially since uh, our, I'm with the Oregon Electric Vehicle Association, and we are part of Forth. So uh, in, in, in a little way, we're part sponsors of this event. Uh, I was wondering why there wasn't an OEVA tag there somehow. No, Forth is actually a really cool organization. And they have, um, OEVA is a bunch of volunteers and enthusiasts. This is a uh, fully staffed professional group. They have uh, several people on staff. They're, they're, they started in Oregon, but they've expanded into other areas. They were um, very crucial in getting the electric vehicle incentive passed in the state. And uh, equity has been part of their uh, mantra from the beginning. And so they're, as part of this incentive, they, they passed two incentives, one that anybody can qualify for. And one, if you are um, less, if your income is below uh, triple the poverty line, then you qualify for this additional second incentive. Very cool. Yeah. So they put their money where their mouth is. Well, I, I'm all about uh, more electric vehicles, especially for people who couldn't otherwise get them. You know, that's, uh, yeah. it would certainly help them more than somebody who has two Range Rovers in the driveway and, you know, whatever. They don't need an electric scooter. That, somebody uh, who, yeah. who doesn't have that, uh, that could be a huge benefit. Yeah, they have a pretty cool program if you're a rideshare driver where you can get low interest loans through them to pay for an EV. And if you're driving around all day, uh, it costs a lot less to do that on electricity than it does on gasoline. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, I really like this program. I mean, speaking as both a person of color and a person of color who's lived in communities of color, we definitely could use something like that. So I am, I'm excited for it. Can't wait to see how they put it together and what comes out. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, you know, especially, you know, we've, we've been talking about mass transportation. I mean, not only is carpooling awesome, but, um, you know, we've talked about electric buses that mm -hmm. drive um, you know, very specific routes and can charge overnight. And, you know, yeah, you know, when you, when you look at the people riding buses and, um, you know, if they're riding these diesel buses two or three, four times a day, being exposed to the diesel fumes, and, and this is unfortunately a way of life, um, then, yeah, let's get rid of those things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yeah, go, go electric and give them some, some clean air. Clean air. Got a little Very bit. Good idea. Everybody needs to breathe. Well, speaking of clean air, let's go to uh, Casey for another story uh, uh, on making the air a little more clean. So I was sorry for the web. And I came across a promotional video from Build Your Dreams. Uh, they have <laughs> also known as BYD to everybody else. Build they, your uh, Wait, is that literally what BYD stands for? Yes, it is. Yeah. Lucky gold I star. No idea. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so no they, uh, they have uh, built 21 electric semi-trucks for uh, Anheuser-Busch uh, over in California. And uh, they followed a the driver throughout his day, including charging with his, uh, what appeared to be a CCS uh, low uh, kilowatt uh, connection. And uh, I thought it was... I thought it was quite nice, and uh, it was a short little video, like two, three minutes, and, uh, and the truck looks pretty cool, too. Uh, as much as we've been talking about uh, all these various more flashy uh, names, both uh, ones that might actually put a good truck out and those that uh, rolled one down a mountain, uh, 
<laughs> yeah, Anheuser-Busch was uh, supposed to be a, a Nikola customer, right? Well, I don't know. They were just they buying EV trucks through. from everybody. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, they, they're well, they and they bought in Tesla semis too. Yeah, uh, Tesla, yeah. Um, International, Mercedes. Uh, I think they even did the prototype trucks from. Um, yeah, it makes sense. The name that, me. Yeah, place uh, a place a, or a few orders from all of the above, and then uh, when you get them, test them out, and you'll know what, what works for you. Yeah, yeah, a, a yes. company of that size with thousands, let's say ten thousand trucks or so, you know, and yeah. with all these deliveries. Yeah, I mean, they're they're the perfect test bed that you mm -hmm. know that, that any truck manufacturer could hope for. Yeah. yeah, I wonder what percentage of their cost of goods and is is just the shipping. <laughs> well, it's a water-based product, right. so a lot. It's be heavy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. It's not like dehydrated, and they can just put water in at the at the end of the line. No, it's, it's wet the whole way through, so it's heavy. Yeah, the yeah. dehydrated beer market hasn't paid <laughs> off. That yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is it is a it is a water based it it is a water based product to which they add just a little bit of alcohol and a wee bit of flavor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shade. I like, like real, real beer. Like real beer. Yes, the craft beer is the thing. Yeah. So, so uh, I don't know if, if Tommy's able to throw a picture, but uh, for me, what stood out was how how much it looked like a normal truck. It looked a little bit like it had a slightly extended platform, and then behind the uh, the day cab, it's got a uh, a large what appears to be battery housing. It doesn't appear to be anything else. And uh, so, so the turn is still a little bit longer than, than typical, yeah. but not that much. Yeah, there's and, yeah. Yeah, I really, I really, yeah, you can hardly tell that this is a completely electric vehicle. So I think that's pretty damn cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. We also make buses. Different. So, so yeah. it looks like where the day cab usually is, it's been replaced by a battery pack. Yeah. 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 So there's no office behind there, but you know, if you're always going back to the to the depot at night, then you don't really necessarily need an office on site. Yeah. Yeah. This looks like a last mile truck. You know, somebody yeah. that, a distributor truck that delivers to retail accounts rather than. Uh... And, and that's exactly what we saw of this driver in the video. So he's he's going from the depot to the liquor store to the grocery store, and then he's plugging in at night and going home for the day. So that's. It's the perfect application for this truck. I wonder if he feels any guilt. No, I'm just. <laughs> wow. That was a bud slam. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't drink, so I don't know. I... Yeah, no, bud's fine. I, who cares? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't drink. It's not even, my thing. Even as a as a last mile truck. I mean, you know, again, you know, tying into removing diesel fumes from populated areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. If you're going to run gas, okay. If if you if you have to run a gas vehicle, do it on the interstate, out in the open, you know, out in the middle of nowhere, and then you know you you put your load in the distribution center and use one of these you know last mile trucks to drive into the city, and drive around. They're quieter. They're cleaner. Perfect. Well, yeah. And uh, diesel is going to be the worst in stop and go traffic. Right, so that it yeah. makes sense. These have shorter routes uh, there, so they're easier to replace with batteries, and it's where the combustion engines perform their worst. So it's the right mm -hmm. place to attack. And then, as battery technology improves, then then you go for longer and longer routes until they're all battery. Yeah. And then on our on our last show, Patrick and uh, Mark pointed out that these are also the same trucks that, uh, if it weren't for you know this particular company, this type of run is where they do the least amount of maintenance to the trucks and they let them fall apart. So that increases their, their emissions. And, and if you have no emissions to start with, right. that helps. Yeah, good thing. Yeah. And you know, yeah. I make fun of Budweiser, and, but I shouldn't. Uh, it, let me pick on the local douchebags at Stone Brewing Company who certainly have tons of money. But I sat behind a stone truck two days ago and sucked in diesel fumes until I finally turned off my climate system. Wow. You know, which was so not fun. So, you know, you'd like to think like the cool craft breweries are leading the way, but a lot of them don't, may not have the money, whereas Anheuser-Busch has the money. So cheers to them for doing it. I mean, yeah. I mean. Plus like when their stuff food. goes dumb and becomes a used truck, now they can afford it at the mom and pop shops. Yeah. Well, Stone's definitely yeah. a mom and pop shop, but yeah. Oh, okay. Regional. 
we, yeah. <laughs> well, they're national, my man. They're, they're uh, national. Okay. Yeah. Arrogant Bastard's a pretty big seller. All right. See, I told yeah. you I don't drink beer. It, it's, uh, <laughs> they're, they're very, very large. Well, let's uh, talk about something else electric that may be making an appearance. Georgia has the story. Okay, guys. So we talked about the Candy K27 electric car, which is a four-passenger, cute little bug of a vehicle. And it was coming soon. Well, guess what, folks? Based on the fact that I still have a Facebook account, because otherwise, how else would I be able to avoid my relatives on my phone <laughs> and just sort of poke in my head on Facebook once in a while? I saw their ads on Facebook. You can actually now put a deposit on for this car and you too can own one of these adorable little buggers for $8,000. What? That's crazy. I, I didn't say anything. Do those qualify for the federal tax incentive? That would be <laughs> that awesome. Was, Get it for free. Well, okay. For the candy machine. So the, no. The math, the math is, is funny. So they actually start at almost 20. Oh. A little more than 20. Right. If you're the first, uh, what is it, one, 500, 100. If you're, if, you're, if you're early order, they'll give you like a $3,000 credit or something, which brings the price down. Then they throw in the $7,500 incentive. And then I think they throw in a California incentive on top of it. Oh, so, so they pull a, a musky and put in the they pull cost after savings? Yeah. Oh. Right, right, yeah. He, he started and, a yeah, bad thing with that. At yeah. least they didn't uh, calculate in uh, fuel cost savings. Over yeah, that would years, suck. You know, kind of thing. <laughs> but, but yeah, that's the, I mean, the price does take all of those things into consideration. Um, but uh, uh, do you want to talk about, range? Jenny, you, have, you have something. But if you're, if you're, for 59 miles commuting, especially if you're in and you just don't have to travel 100 miles each way every day, this is a great in-town car. Especially, you know, if you've got a student and they're in a college town and they literally only have to travel around for their groceries and a few things, this is a great way for them to have a car without a ton load of costs, that they don't have to deal with gas a lot, and it's very energy efficient at EV. So it's yeah. a nice entry level vehicle. And it does look like uh, you might pay a little bit extra for the giant key at the back that you got to twirl around to make it go. But other than that, it's fine. So I'm, I like cute little, cute little bug things. What can I say? And hell of excited that it's finally on the market and that yes, you too can basically be an obnoxious young hipster in your bright red vehicle that you know you probably can't take to your corner shop for a repair but who cares it's going to last forever you know it you're going to take good care of it you're going to love it so i'm, I'm thrilled <laughs> yeah so georgia make, you make a really good point there that uh in, in certain communities it's uh in, for certain use cases this is great if you if you buy it and expect it to do everything that your uh, current car does that might not work out so well but uh, the first EV that I had, had 40 miles of range. And I had a 10 mile commute, uh, running errands five or six miles. I could do both of those in a day without even charging in between. And uh, so for, for that, it was, it was really nice. So if you, if you buy it and, and use it for where it works, you'll, you'll love it. Yeah. Well, because I, I have to confess, I live in town and I work in town. I bought my car with 35,000 miles on it. It is five years later. It is 46,000 miles on this car. <laughs> you changed your oil I by the calendar. <laughs> I literally have only put about 11,000 miles on my car in five years. So I'm wow. definitely that key demographic of person who knows it. I go maybe seven miles. I can walk. I, if I walk four miles, I'm halfway through town. You know, and I've gotten my daily exercise. Me in a car is literally me in like a little putt putt track, just in a yeah. circle. You brought up uh, about would nobody be able to fix it? Uh, that that uh, that does help with uh, the right to repair passing this uh, past week in uh, in Massachusetts. I wonder if we could get that on the ballot here in California. That would be great because if you are also a hobbyist and you want to tool around with a car, 
you don't want to do this with an actual Tesla unless you're one of our fine people here or one of the fellow people in the Tesla community who knows what the hell you are doing with a big old expensive tex Tesla. See, this is, this is one of those cars that you can fuck around with and not find out. <laughs> right, right. Something tells me though that with the uh, the candy, you know, it's it's less of a right to repair proprietary. Don't touch our car, as it is. Good luck finding replacement parts for. Use the Chinese screw number seven thousand. Not sold in the U.S. Right. Dude, yeah. Which is cool. You just yeah. go online and you go to Wish and you scroll. <laughs> and you wait six months. <laughs> ball gowns that, that don't look like that when they arrive. You buy it off a of wish, like everyone else. Yeah, yeah. But I'll tell you, I know the ideal, the, the, the demographic for this car, I mean, the people most likely to buy this car are the parents of teenage children. Because they're not going far. They're, they're not going far. They're not going fast. And this is essentially a vehicular prophylactic. This is why I marked up the spark. Oh, that's cold. That's cold. Because I want to tell you, my first girlfriend. Yeah, my sweet 16, my super sweet 16 from MTV, when they used to do those obnoxious shows with spoiled brat rich kids who were getting things like Hummers and Cadillac Escalade SUVs for their 16th birthday. This is the car you get for a 16 year old because they, they don't buy there themselves. is nowhere in God's green earth that a 16 year old needs to be in a massive SUV like that. Yeah, that this doesn't have the back seat easy. where they can get in trouble either. <laughs> oh no, a kid can get, in, they, can, they can fold themselves into origami and get in trouble in like a two seater motorcycle. Don't, don't worry Believe about it. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick was hoping. Oh, He's like, yes, I can't get in trouble. <laughs> He dashed his hopes about the night in trouble. <laughs> so, there's a couple of things about this that I want to mention. The, the candy has a top speed of 63 miles an hour. Yeah. No speeding means, tickets. Which means it's going to, well, right? And this has long been my thing of like new drivers should not get massive, powerful vehicles. They should automatically mm -hmm. get mm -hmm. small tiny little underpowered vehicles so that they s learn their first experiences driving are from a more humble state. But like they used to get the, the, the base model mini with the manual choke and the five, oh, well not five speed, but whatever the transmission was of the day. No, dude, I'm talking like 50 CC <laughs> yeah. moped. And I do mean pedals <laughs> and motor, okay? Right, right. So this is the deluxe. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, you want to learn humility on the road. That is the vehicle that you need. <laughs> so, I, but no, my, I, I can appreciate the, the intimidation factor of making sure they're terrified and feeling like a small shrimp in a big, big world in this car on the freeway. Keep them scared. Right. That's what you want to do as a parent. Pay attention. No texting and driving if you think it's going to be a tin can. Well, that's right. It's it's not so much that, but. Um, culturally we as a country have to do a lot of changing yeah. mm -hmm. it used to be cool to drink and drive it used to be cool dad could have a beer in the front seat i'm not that old i remember that well wait i'm very really? old and I do <laughs> oh yeah, yeah are you kidding me yeah i was gonna right. correct you there you, you have to be pretty old to remember that not pretty young yeah, <laughs> yeah well, i'm yeah. old uh, i'll admit it we need to have a little cultural shift though uh, where mm -hmm. big isn't cool Big isn't the thing that's cool, and that small and slow is cool too. It's different purpose. It's a different use scenario, and a lot of our culture right now just no one would consider this car. I don't want to say no one. I'm sorry. Lots of people wouldn't because it only goes 63. It's tiny. Yes, it passes crash standards, but I'm sure it's not as safe as a Denali. Um, you know that kind of thing. And I, I want to wrap my baby in a full size Yukon. Um, we need to no, get to a place. Rollover rates would like to mm -hmm. speak to you if you think yeah. that's safe. No. I'm sorry. Mm. Yeah, and I, and actually, Rollover before the, the commenters, I know the people of all you've already started typing and just stop right now because it has not. <laughs> no, yet we want the interaction. Crash it tests. <laughs> so to clarify what Russell was just saying, this car has not yet passed crash tests. We're aware of that. Erase what you just typed. <laughs> I swear I read in there that it had passed American crash standards. I, I think it got the conformity and they were about to do the crash tests. Thank you. They okay. got that, they, yes. Yeah. I stand they, yeah. modified then. There you go. I, I, I certainly don't want we'll to distribute misinformation. 
Unless yeah. it's about the election, at which point I don't care. <laughs> Um, I have declared myself president, so y'all need to pay your taxes to me. Viewers are going to wonder Biden's why there's an election Biden's disclaimer Biden's underneath this video. Yeah. <laughs> oh. What drives this? No, <laughs> well, if we didn't get a disclaimer before, we're going to get a disclaimer after this next section. Let's go to Mark Coughlin for This Week in Tesla. This Week in Tesla has a number of things that happen. As always, every week, this stuff happens. It's crazy. But, uh, I'm going to start with the Boring Company, another arm of Tesla. The Boring Company uh, has started to develop their first uh, exterior outside um, station at the Las Vegas uh, Loop. So as you may know, uh, it's about a mile long. Uh, there's going to be three stations, two that are outside and uh, one that's underground. So they've started to build the, uh, one of the exterior stations uh, on the north, uh, north side. And uh, that's going to be interesting to see as that moves along. Uh, another uh, boring company piece of information is that uh, for whatever reason, there's a project that's going to be happening in Austin, Texas for the boring company. This is kind of a surprise. It was, it was uh, sprung on us just uh, late last week. We're not really sure why, why there is a boring project in Austin. Is it going to be on the uh, Tesla Gigafactory site? Is it to the downtown uh, Austin? Is it to the uh, airport? Uh, we don't know, uh, but they're hiring people for the job already. So we're hoping to learn more in the coming week. Another bit of news is that, uh, again, Tesla, because of course they're, they only sell a couple cars, right? So they've decided to sell tequila now, and uh, they've uh, put out a new bottle, uh, highly expensive tequila. Uh, it's been, <laughs> it's been designed, uh, but with the help of uh, their design department. And uh, it's this crazy lightning bolt uh, looking bottle. Now, um, am I able to share here, Russell? Do we have- Yes, uh, believe it or it. not, you can share. Oh, look, look at, at that. that. <gasps> Perfect. Beautiful. Dumbest. I like the bottle. Um, I don't care about the tequila. <laughs> so I showed my wife this and she said, buy it, buy it now. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> she loves okay. the bottle. Yeah. Who That's on this something. show has ordered it? I've ordered two. Ah! <laughs> Wait. I wanted two. She told me no. I'm, only because only because it's Patrick. Patrick, is this an investment or is this a purchase? Oh, it's a purchase. So uh, I I was I ordered one to drink, one to keep, and I wanted to get one to flip, but they only let you have two. So I'm not going to be on on eBay. So yep, they're 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 for me. Why would you pay two hundred and fifty dollars for a forty dollar bottle of tequila? It was eighty dollars. <laughs> you, you, you don't understand. You don't. You just don't <laughs> I understand. And I can't explain it to you. If you don't get it, you just don't know. <laughs> oh, I, I think I think the comeback you were searching for is, "Have you driven one, bro?" <laughs> uh -huh. Stunk. <laughs> Stunk. I, I, missed, I missed. I missed out on the flamethrower, the short shorts, the uh, surfboard, oh. everything. So I was like, "Let me just." Do Thank you. You're lucky, Casey. You're not cursed. You're blessed. <laughs> yeah, I'll be able to put it right over here next to my uh, boring fire extinguisher and my little teeny Tesla supercharger, and then the uh, high power wall charger uh, faceplate behind it. So yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll add to my shrine. <laughs> so it's so if, if I may. If I may, Patrick, I, and I'm sorry to interrupt this week in Tesla, uh, Mark, but um, there's, this, <laughs> this the is a moment that I've been waiting for for quite some time because <laughs> if, I, if I may, Patrick, there was a time when you referred to me purchasing the RAV4 Prime as a well-trained consumer. And I believe <laughs> that you have just stepped all over that planet <laughs> by going through your entire inventory of really stupid purchases. Mike, drop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <if> this... <laughs> hmm. Let's see. Uh, how much does a RAV4 Prime cost versus the few items I have back here? <laughs> oh, a RAV4 Prime costs about a quarter of how much was your model? Uh, model oh, Prime? yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, we have an X and a three. So yeah, I've, I've, I've paid plenty. You're right. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, but if I mean, you're talking you about the $60 fire extinguisher, like I'm going to say no. <laughs> oh. yeah. The good thing is my Tesla investments have paid for it all and then some. So right. there is and, that. Yes. Yes. There is that. 
that was the response I was waiting to hear from you, Connor, because I know that yeah. to be the case. You're like, it's funny money anyway, whatever. But yeah. okay, I'm sorry, Mark. I really, really. Yeah, the I'm last, so last bit of the story is that um, we have uh, here in Kitchener, Ontario, where I live, the new Tesla showroom has just opened up. So uh, it's uh, it's been a long time coming. Over a year, we've expected it. Uh, we have had a service bay now for a year, and uh, now the showroom where you can purchase, uh, where you can test drive, and where ultimately you can take your delivery uh, can happen locally here in the KW area, and we're glad to see it. It's finally open. Are they attached, or are they in a different location? They're attached. Oh, nice. And, and just for the Will record, be, um... I'm sorry, Tony. Oh, I was going to say, will you be doing any uh, video from the from the new place, Mark? Um, I've actually done a, a quick video already, and I'll be placing that up on our Twitter feed, uh, the Tesla Life, uh, shortly. Excellent. And Mark has already found the Easter egg. <laughs> in, That's right. In showroom. And, and Russell's already commented on the Easter egg. <laughs> so go to at the Tesla Life on Twitter, and you can find out what we're talking about. <laughs> Ooh. How's that for a teaser? Ooh. There we go. Man, I'm nice. a marketing genius. And genius. If you believe that, you're definitely not a marketing genius. Uh, let's go to Tony, who's got a story about two wheelers. And, uh, you know, I love two wheelers of all shapes and sizes. Um, so, yeah. yeah oh, did I surprise you, Tony? The... I'm sorry. No, sorry. You were talking about two wheelers. And I was like, wait, I have a, a something about motorcycles. Um, <laughs> two no. wheelers. And then, less powerful two, two wheelers. wheelers. <laughs> yeah, less powerful. Too. So actually, okay. Sorry. I know we talk about, see, we talk about e-bikes and electric motorcycles. And, well, what I found was on, in the Chicago Sun-Times, they did an article talking about something that Chicago Metra is trying out, which is bike cars. And these are dedicated, um, they're, they're dedicated cars that are um, just for commuters to bring their bikes. And what's really neat is that they are designated by these, um, hold on, I gotta bring this up and share the screen. So you can see they have the big white um, bikes on the side. And oh, they a train are, car, not an automobile car. I got you. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. So Metro, Metro Rail is, yeah, okay. Metro Rail is Chicago's uh, commuter rail system. And um, so what they're doing is, see, now I got to bring up another oh, no. thing. They've, de they've designated what is called the Milwaukee District North Line, which runs from Chicago Union Station down here in the bottom, all the way up to Fox Lake up here. So it runs pretty much uh, north and then it veers over to the west that you can see and this is uh, metro rails line so you can actually they actually show you gps on uh, the different trains that are going inbound and outbound um so the reason they chose this line to test um, one car at first and then a couple of cars later on is because this line runs past different uh, forest preserves and different areas where people might want to take the bike, get off the train, and then do some cycling. So this is what a, a regular metro rail um, train car looks like. And so what they're doing is they're removing all the seats down here on the bottom and just putting in bike racks. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a picture of that. And um, so there'll be bike racks on the first floor and then up on top oh, here okay. is where the people will sit. And then you can see down below. And the, the thing across here is, um, is like for the people walk. up top to put their, um, you know, purses, luggage, their, um, their bags and whatever. So that's what this is, a little catwalk looking thing. So people will put, put their bikes down here. They'll come up here to sit and um, it's a really great thing that they're doing, and the hope is that people will be able to ride their bikes to the train station, put their bikes on the train, take the train into the city, and then be able to ride around in the city to work, and then, you know, ride back and, and everything. In February. 
that's the problem. See, <laughs> there, there lies my issue with this entire thing. They're just starting it with one test train, uh, one test car. By the as, end of the as year, as we enter fall. To, oh my God! Yes, I and then to. at the end of the year, they're going to put in a second car, and and then they expect to um, figure out the results by spring. Right, right. Oh. And, and it'll be a huge what? failure. That no one bothered, right? Yeah. And they're going to say, yeah, exactly. And they're going to say, well, Ooh. no one used these. I wow. thought you were going to say a whole it, year. Kill me. Just right. kill me now. I, um, I mean, I know some hardcore bikers, but uh, Chicago in the winter. That's <laughs> right. hardcore. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So if you take the coaster uh, here in San Diego, and I'm sure that there's at least one other person that can probably say this. We've had bikes on there for as long as I've known, um, they didn't do something quite as dramatic. What they did was they took out a couple of seats in every car and people yeah. just carry their bike, drop it there and then go sit down. And it's wonderful. It's great to see. And it's, that's the perfect last mile solution, right? A human powered mm -hmm. bike getting off the train and then riding to wherever you're going to go. Um, yeah, we need to do right. more of this and maybe don't run the test over the winter in Chicago. <laughs> Yeah. Probably. Now I will say that <laughs> there there are designated cars on Metro Rail that will do I think like up to five maybe six bikes, and and but those are few and far between. This is you know taking it up a notch, and and dedicating entire cars to to bikes. But um, but yeah, I mean bikes on trains have been has been a thing for as long as I've lived here in, in Chicago. Um, but again, yeah, that's the point. It's it's the last mile thing. Yeah. Yeah, cool. we uh, so I, we have light rail here. Uh, it's, it's called Max, and uh, at every entrance there are bike hooks, uh, three or four of them, and uh, so you can just go right in, hang your bike up, and either stand there or take a seat next to it. And the cool thing is, so that area, it's um, for bikes or wheelchairs, or you can just stand there, and there's hooks. So um, that way they can have that area that bikes can use, but it's not like only for bikes or dedicated to it. And since it's at nearly every door, that makes it really easy when you get on. Right, there's no, where do I go with my bike? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah and if they're full, the one you got on, you can just hold it in the, in the center space there and then, then go to another car at the next stop. Yeah, here's, here's I remember seeing these when I, was, when I was there, it looks like this. Oh, yeah, oh, that's, that's cool. It. That's Max. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, that's the max. And this it's 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 so awesome. It really is. People walk in with their bike and they hop on the train with their bike and they just put it up and then they either stand next to it or they just have a seat. It's yep. Yeah, it's, it's great. Yeah, so right there you can see that the signage is for strollers or for luggage and yep. And there's a little hand mm -hmm. hook you can stand there. Yep. Very and cool. because the bikes are put up vertically, they, they occupy less space. Ooh. Yeah. Somebody yeah. thought about that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, it just feels it's, it sounds like a great idea. I just fear that it's being set up to fail. Yeah. 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 I mean, it took us all of five seconds to figure <laughs> out why you don't test a bike rack in winter. In, Ch in Chicago. Uh, yeah. Mm. In Chicago. Yeah. I don't know. But the consultants that they hired, they had to pay millions for that opinion. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> the consultants they hired in California thought it was a great idea. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know so let's hope it California. works. Hopefully I'll hopefully yeah. I'll come back in, in six months and you know we'll say it was a great idea. But you know what? Go ride it just to, to help the numbers. Exactly. The Uber yeah, riders can go out there area. and uh, <laughs> well pump the numbers for, up. For our next story, George is going to talk again about a small vehicle, but not the candy. Same color though. <laughs> <laughs> Close enough, though. Um, okay, if you have those classic British Avenger TV series daydreams, like, okay, I do, um, and you want to be sustainable, Swindon Powertrain now has an electric conversion kit for those super cool classic minis. And I mean... Like that? Probably... Those Classic. Austin Powers, you've seen it in Austin Powers, mm. and it's just like a little square rounded off thing. It's adorable. It's perfect. It is the quintessential tiny ass car. It is the classic British Mini. 
and you too can pick up a kit that has a battery pack, uh, motor controller, DC, DC converter, yep. onboard charger. Go. Well, no, actually those are inventory. <laughs> and it'll only cost you $28,670. Oh, jeez. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> One second. <laughs> Let me finish laughing. Um, yeah. The, it, the, 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 yeah. But, but, but you're going to have the cutest, coolest kit car possible. And uh, I don't know. I mean, yes, this is not an economy model. This is definitely a hobbyist thing. So if you just happen to be a millionaire who likes to tool around in the garage with, your, with that little classic mini that you picked up somewhere, and, um, you know, while you were bicycling through... Uh, Ipswich, you finally can get that thing electric and sustainable. And um, good luck with that. I like it. It's actually more expensive because I think I missed at least one thing on this. Might be $11,535. So, so anywhere yeah. between about $29,000 to about $40 something thousand dollars. <laughs> this just gets better and better. Better. A 1960s yeah. classic yeah. mini that makes you feel like the swinging superstar spy that you are in your heart, man. It's and it's impractical, but I love it. What do you want from me? You know, I mean, it's a mini, and I've been a Mini Cooper fan for a long time, and I love classic cars. So I just need the millions. Once again, mm -hmm. I've declared myself president, and you can send your taxes to me. Or, or I got I got an alternative idea. You can just go out and buy yourself a three-year-old Bolt EV, get quadruple the mileage, and then just take the extra twenty thousand dollars you're saving and burn it. <laughs> and you get so, it's so much less sexy. You can't that wear a unitard and, and a Bolt just EV. This is leave it to the Canadians. It makes sense. It, that's the what's wrong with Don't Canada. Don't burn it. That's I emissions. Come on. You want to be zero emissions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, Patrick, we can flush yours. <laughs> Just donate it to the, uh, to the we'll Hungry Children it. Foundation. Mark, mark out in the, mark in the driveway with a lighter and a toonie. <laughs> Just, Does anyone want to melt it? Yeah. <laughs> I realize this is no, a huge a huge guest well, it's, guess. Just like a, it's just a super cool hobbyist thing this is so impractical fully no kidding aside um it's so damned impractical but i can understand having it because i do have a passion for those little classic cars man hey most most good hobbies truly are impractical that's what makes them a good hobby what is that works so that's a toonie that's a toonie, <laughs> that a toonie. He's, he's gonna light it on fire for us now yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> go ahead and burn it you canadian commie <laughs> you're talking about your paper money that melts but yeah that, that that also melts. I do do this. <laughs> I, does anybody have any idea like a wild guess what a 24 kilowatt hour battery pack weighs um twice that <laughs> so, 700 pounds? Six, hundred pounds. Six, 700 pounds, yeah. 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 I'm just trying to figure out like 160 horsepower in the classic mini body. Like, mm -hmm. would that be a real goer? Would it be fun or is it? You would double Russell, the weight of the car. You, if you're a millionaire, you just roll it onto your yacht when you're visiting <laughs> England and. Got <laughs> over to oh where we live in, in America. There you go. There's your use case. This would be the perfect tow behind car if you have one of those big ass RV things. Oh my God, no, no. Can, can it can it still be towed behind once they convert it? No. No. I don't know, but your yeah, region because, would be because awesome. it charges <laughs> too, <Casey. laughs> Everybody who buys this kit is probably should be also put on a list as having way too much fucking. Money. But if you do want to do a conversion, oh. there are cheaper and better ways to do it than uh, a kit oh. that's that expensive. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, Although, if you're, if you're it does even, take all the guesswork out. If you're it even looking does. into this, you could, you, could get, you could buy so much co cocaine for the same price. <laughs> <laughs> you know? No, no it's Tesla tequila. No, Come on. Tesla tequila, <laughs> yeah. Tesla tequila. You don't know what you From the eBay markets. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> 
it is cool that they're doing it. I'd love to see, I'd love to see more of these in other cars that, you know, to see more conversions for that, more people kind of getting into that, that, that spirit that the movement used to have, which was do it yourself and, and, you know, kind of like, because there weren't off the shelf things to buy. There weren't ready-made, a lot of ready-made EV if you could buy. So yeah, I mean, if you didn't have, uh, what was it? It was a Ranger, right, Patrick? Um, mine was a Chevy S10. An S10, e. I'm sorry. The, the mini truck. Uh, there weren't a lot of options. So it's cool to see this, uh, I think. So yeah, all, that was a minute and a half for me to say, cool. Um, <laughs> somebody cut my mic. Let's go to Casey. I'm not going to flex. <laughs> yeah. Let's go to Casey, who has a story about another EV, which may or may not be what the manufacturer has claimed. Ooh, burning controversy. Can I do my uh, breaking news? Yes, I saw that. Well, uh, no? Uh, uh, well, well, maybe. Okay. Well, uh, allegedly, the, the, the Ford Mustang Mach-E both the 300 mile model and the 280 mile model allegedly will not meet their EPA ratings. Ford says, nah, -uh, we will. So uh, they are supposed to achieve 300 miles and 270 miles. And uh, somebody was digging through the government uh, documentation and saw that they achieved 288 miles and 250 miles. So under 20 miles with, below what they were, or 20 miles below what they were supposed to achieve on the on the low end, and almost 20 miles on the on the high end. Yeah, but they're saying that uh, there's more testing to go, and and they'll they'll definitely achieve the marker that they've put forward. Like that's what they've said publicly, right? This is what they said before we found out they were taping up door seams and putting uh, moon disc rims on the cars. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm trying to I'm trying to read the, now so I just I remember from the Chicago Auto Show there there were like nine different versions of the Mach-E yes. or something I forgot it's like the California the the Highway One or whatever the hell they were calling it what, what right. do you do you know is that is that what it was I don't the know which long range two ones? they were but they were those two ranges I think it might have been four different models with two different batteries and two different yeah. trims of each of those. Yeah. So, I'm but the battery I, packs is just basically two battery. Two battery packs. packs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So is or, this, or maybe this just down a... then? Does, One more. Does this mean throughout all the models? Do, do we do we do we know whether this like it's not going to hit it? Is this indicative to the Mach E? Is there any speculation? Yeah, just the just the Mach E, and, um, and so Ford's making it seem like somebody was in there digging out. Uh, early data that that's not what the final product's going to match. I don't know why they would pay to do the test twice. And, uh, and this other person is like, hey, every other manufacturer does it this way and wants it to register, this is what you're going to get once they run the formula. Because the numbers that they pulled out were the unadjusted formulas. So they got uh, yeah. like 300 miles and uh, 290 or something. Yeah. But then you got to you know, adjust for the tests that they don't run on on the EVs that they do run on the gas cars. I'd have to say that Ford needs to be aware if they don't come up with the numbers that they originally said, um, people are going to do comparisons uh, when they get the real numbers. And that could be the downfall of the Mach-E if, uh, if they are not what they said they were going to be, if they're drastically under. Yep. So I, for the uh, all-wheel drive extended range Mach-E, the unadjusted city range is 371 and a half. And the combined range would be 356.8, but again, unadjusted. I'm going to disagree with Mark. I'm sorry, Casey. Okay. You don't think that people are going to compare EVs based on... Which people? On Who people, people that are buying it? No. Yeah, if you can look at the Ford no. or, the, or the Chevy. I, I think the vast majority of Mach-E buyers want to buy a Ford, want to buy a, a Mustang. Mustang, and don't give a rat's ass if it gets 20% less than another car, which they don't want to buy. 
This yeah, is true. You don't that's think, not you don't everybody. Think there's, hypermilers, there's, there's not hypermilers going out no. there and, you know, trying but, to squeeze every mile. A Mustang, a Tony. Mustang. Well, well maybe they had a Mustang, Mustang when they were a kid. can't say them in the same <laughs> sentence, buddy. <laughs> maybe they had a Mustang when they were a kid, and now they're going to hypermile, and they would like to also be able to lay their, their, their foot down with the lightning pedal, like uh, this guy. And uh, <laughs> I, I'm not saying Mark's wrong. I just disagree. I, I, just, I think I think I, most I think of those sides. We're way into this. We follow mm-hmm. this stuff, man. We write these things down. We commit it to memory. You, yeah. all of us, knows most car buyers. Mm-hmm. Well, my dad really likes the idea of the Mustang, and he 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 knew a lot of the specs already before I even talked to him about it. And uh, I mean, I, I would just think that at this point, uh, if I were Ford and and it's and it's on the edge. I would throw in three more battery cells and, and, and make the, and make the numbers than, than come out and not that. make my ads. Yeah, this is true though. And your mileage may vary. People yes. are very much used to getting 20% lower MPG than they have been promised. So if the range isn't quite what the early press said it would be, mm-hmm. uh, it's it, it, the EPA numbers are what is going to eventually be advertised because that's all they can legally do. So it will meet that number. Yeah, none of my Teslas have met EPA unless I sat down and made my best effort to hypermile them. Oh, wow, I get mine easily. That's weird. Well, I mean, I'm driving the P series. Which which proves (laughs) everybody's different. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't don't know, but I mean, to to Russell's point is, is it possible that it's something like, is range going to become like this generation's version of horsepower where people sit around and they compare the numbers? And if, if you buy a 350 and you only get 340, then are people going to be upset? You know, whether you're talking horsepower or range. Now, if it, if it or, says 350 on the dash and they can only go 200, they will raise hell. Sure. But if, it's, if it says 350 on the sticker and they get 310, I, I don't know that most average Americans will say anything, or Canadians. But that then then that raises the 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 question that if it says three fifty and you get three twenty, let's say three twenty five. Okay, that that might be good for the first year. After three years, are we going to be looking at three hundred? <laughs> are we going to be looking at two ninety? And now that in, that initial disparagement that you're willing to write off. Now you have a five-year-old car that doesn't come anywhere near what EPA wants. And you're Bring looking at resale. Works. You're looking at what, yeah, see, now mm-hmm. we start looking at what they're promising and what gets delivered. We do have, we do have a, uh, an analog for this. What happened with the Nissan Leaf? Yeah, that's just what I was thinking. My 2011 Nissan Leaf only started out with, I don't know, 75 miles of range and that slowly deteriorated. And, uh, it, their degradation was certainly worse than than I wanted it to be, and at the uh, end of its life, it was down to something like forty six miles, which uh, is not a lot. Um, but if you know that and you use it appropriately, that's fine. But if you bought it because it said seventy something and you needed mm-hmm. at least sixty five of that, and now it's down to fifty, that's not going to work. So yeah, the, how much the battery degradation uh, happens over as it ages is definitely something to watch for. Yeah, I mean, if you only lose like 10 yeah. miles over the life, that's not so, bad, not so big a deal. Right. But if you lose half of it in three years. And well, that's why this discussion I mean, of initial. No, nobody's, sorry, saying, Mark, but, yeah. nobody's saying Ford's going to run into a degradation issue, but we don't know. It's, uh, they haven't yet. Uh-huh. And of course, and of course, uh, Nissan had the whole thing where they, they weren't liquid cooled and they got mm-hmm. over baked. And there were, you know, there were, there were some reasons for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh if if Ford only loses a little bit, then uh, you know with the bigger range in most EVs they're coming out with as a starting amount, it's going to work fine uh, for for the vast majority of people. Um, I'm just concerned that uh, that Ford may have an uphill battle if they come out with a vehicle that misses the numbers they said they were going to have, and people I think people will will compare because yeah. it's not it's not like the Ford is you know. Fifteen thousand dollars cheaper than other EVs. No, it's right up there in price. So you're paying the same dollars. Uh, people should be comparing apples to apples, at least for range, uh, and yeah. the money that they're spending. If they're if they're doing the stretch to get the Ford Mustang E, and they could have got the 
the gas one. And, and, and then now they, you know, they needed all that range because this is their first EV. They, they, they skipped the hybrid and now they need this, you know, they need the 350 to get to work and they can only do 320 and they got to push it. 350 miles to get to work. Yeah. I mean, how <laughs> many, how one of those crazy people who drinks like, to Manhattan. How? What, five hours? What? Yeah. So, so anyway, you get to the work, you, you get to your 20 miles from work, you got to push it and then you plug it in and like, now you're like off the car. I don't imagine it'll be too many people, but but I do imagine that. Um, I, I get that, it. Alex Roy perfect. commutes from Western PA to New York City in a Model Three. <laughs> yeah. I get it. Yeah. But that's the vast minor- majority. And where Mark and I differ is, if you want a Ford and you want an electric Ford, guess what you're going to buy. And it the doesn't Mustang. matter whether the Chevy that you would never buy gets is more efficient or has more range or is cheaper you want a ford and brand loyalty is the number one reason why consumers buy vehicles right yeah that's what tony and i were talking about when i called him a well-trained consumer because he buys toyotas (laughs) and he threw it back at me because i buy teslas yeah that's yeah we're trained i'm driving (laughs) i'm driving a second generation prius i mean i'm not coming from any higher moral ground. I'm just pointing out that Mark may be right. I may be right. Time will tell. It will be interesting to see if the, 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 the sort of meta discussion that we're having, and I'm not saying it's not important. It is, but it's really inside baseball, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. That's all. Yeah. Hey, let's go to Casey who has another story about another Ford that's electric. Yeah, well, it's a, this one's a, is a, a plant <laughs> for electric Fords. So uh, Ford is pumping in $100 million into their Kansas City plant. It's going to make the E-Transit and the EF-150. Uh, why don't they just call it the E-150 and pretend that the van didn't exist? Uh, <laughs> E-Transit, yeah. E-Transit! Yes, the E-Transit, baby. I want that car so bad. I, I think it would make a great little camper or tiny home, regardless of the price. Yeah. So, yeah. So uh, they are they are putting their money where their mouth is, just like Volkswagen and uh, certain other ones are already all in on the EV. So this thing is coming. So uh, all the people arguing about fracking and gas and all that shit, it's coming, whether you want to or not. I hope you're not 100 percent invested in oil. Have they said how much they're spending to retool? Uh, it's a hundred million, three point two billion dollar investment. Wow! Oh, the total thing is three point two billion. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Kansas, Kansas City yeah. is a hundred million. Yeah. Hundred million in Kansas City. Yeah. But so this is huge. I mean, yeah. This. I mean, you know, we've we've said time and time again. Um, you know, where, um, where to see the biggest impact? If we oh. could pull people away from twenty five mile per gallon trucks and put them into EVs. That's huge. It's a much bigger impact than taking someone off a 60 mile per gallon Prius and putting them into a, you know, a Bolt or, you know, or an EV. So, yeah, and it's and optimistic then, to yeah. say trucks get 25 miles per gallon too. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Especially a work and, truck yeah, or van. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And the same with the delivery vans. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, if, if, if we can pull people off of those things and put them into an electric, you know, F-150 or, um, you know, an electric e-transit. I mean, that's this is this is huge. It's it's a it's a huge announcement, and I think most people miss that point. You know, yeah, of, of gets, the impact this is going to have. It gets yeah. huger. They're going to put huger. It's more huge. They're going to put uh, 1.35 billion US into Oakville, uh, Ontario. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Damn Canadian communists. Well, I mean, you look how many Fords are already built in Canada and sent back anyway. <laughs> it only makes sense. Yeah. I'm oh, sorry, Johnny. Go ahead. No, no, no. I mean, just I just think this is this is a this is a huge thing, you know. And yeah. it's good. We have always said. I mean, for years we've said, when are the major manufacturers going to wake up? When are they mm-hmm. going to start jumping on this? And you know, we anticipated that once the dam broke, it was you know, it was going to be, you know, all these major manufacturers going in and going huge. And this is just an example of that. And it's just, to me, it's just exciting to see something like this. That's a lot of money going into multiple factories 
dedicated to making electric vehicles that are desperately needed. Yeah. And the answer to the when question, 13 years after the, uh, the uh, young whippersnapper did it. Yeah. I'm not sure what that question was, but, but uh, I, I will say that if, if Ford uh, didn't do this, I don't think there would be a Ford by 2030. So they absolutely yeah. have to do this. Um, we, we've seen California and other and, and countries from around the world that are putting in mandates for zero emission vehicles by certain dates, 2030, 2035, whenever it is, where they will just not allow uh, gas uh, powered vehicles in, in those areas to be to be purchased new. So uh, yeah, they have to have an offering and they have to do a, a large multi-billion dollar investment to get there. Isn't it funny how the, the car companies, most of them haven't, well, certainly Ford, let's just pick on Ford. Didn't scale up until all of a sudden the, the writing was on the wall. Yeah. Like in, in contract form, this is what's going to happen. Oh, hey, now oh, we're going to- We can't do it. Oh, we can do it perfectly. <laughs> Good for them for doing I think that's it. That's human nature, though. I'm sorry. Yeah. Really, yeah. I think that's human nature. We, I mean, there are a few people for whom they have long vision. They can sit there and game out consequences, and they say, "Okay, those would be bad. I don't want them," and they take a different path. And then there's a lot of people for whom, yeah, maybe it'll happen, but maybe it won't. And why do I have to deal with it? Why do I have to do that work? I don't want to change. And they keep going until the brick wall is you know, maybe there. Grasshopper versus ant. <laughs> yeah, and you have to think a lot of the people that are at Ford have been there for decades. They went there for their career because they liked the stuff that they made. And now these, when someone says, hey, we need to make something else, they're like, what? No, why would I do that? That's going to cost me billions. I'm going to have very little margin until the parts are all, the batteries are commodities. I, I make money selling these trucks. Uh, you're dumb. Get away. <laughs> and and it, yeah. it's, it might not be what we want them to do, but you can't say it's irrational. It's not long term, yeah. but it's, it's I, your thing, yeah. only thinking short term. Yeah, I think I think uh, the the autom automobile manufacturers um, hired a lot of the executives from Kodak. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, and that they served them well. And Xerox Park and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So one other thing to look at video. with this, <laughs> another good thing to look at with this though is is look at how many uh, '90s like early 90s or even older uh, F-150s and, and, and uh, E-Series vans that you still see on the road today from, from mm -hmm. that. And then think about what the emissions were back then and how they are today with, with their lack of maintenance. And then think about yeah. how long these will sit on the road and what that could do for the air that we all breathe because where these vehicles are, construction sites, deliveries, downtown cores, they're right up in what we're breathing in, so. Right, yep. right. Well, on that happy thought, let's go to one of my favorite subjects. And luckily for all of you, Tony's going to talk about the story. <laughs> so when you think about the experience of driving your car, you think of the windows rolled down, you know, you're rolling silently through the woods and, you know, you can hear the babbling brook because you know you're in your EV and you hear the birds chirping and life is good and the reason life is so good is because at that point in time you've turned off all of your car's infotainment system and you're just enjoying nature but that time's going to come when you're on the interstate you're driving 60 miles an hour the windows are rolled up and you're going to want to listen to some music and you're going to have to dig through this god awful interface to find the song you're looking for, or God forbid you want to change just the, the, the air conditioning or maybe turn on your heated seats or you know whatever. And you realize whoever designed this user interface was possibly deaf, dumb, and or blind. That was a who, a who reference, that's, by the way. That's ableist, okay? Would you just stop? Yes, well, I guess that's true. You know what, Tommy would never have gone um, yeah, that would never There's be a, a pop culture a reference opera. no he one's going to get. Yeah. Oh, wait. No one. No one. I know. Wait, in our audience, anyway. they all know. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. The that's oldest true. demographic on YouTube. Yes, yeah. we got yeah. it. <laughs> Both of Go them. seniors. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, thankfully, we're starting to see a trend in manufacturing, automobile manufacturing, in that the car manufacturers are letting go of infotainment and they're they're slowly starting to give up that control rather than de designing these crazy stupid and unupdatable user interfaces they're now handing it over and it, okay this blew my mind and if you guys um already know you'll blot it out but do you know who has um embedded software in more than 175 million vehicles made by more than a dozen brands? Android and Apple? Uh, I'd say Microsoft. No. Well, okay, yeah, it, it is it's Android and it, um, Blackberry. Unix. Remember Black, Blackberry yeah. phones? They don't do phones, but Blackberry's automotive software platform is embedded in more than 175 million vehicles. Audi, Ford, Hyundai, Porsche, and Toyota. That explains Blackberry. it. Blackberry. Oh. I know, right? Yeah, they're still stuck in the 90s. But so what, so what that means is, um, is that the car manufacturers are starting to give up control to these people who actually do specialize in user interface design and in creating these infotainment centers that are easier to use and easier to navigate. The ones that you can actually work without having to take your eyes off the road for 20 seconds at a time just to figure out what it is you're doing, which is one of my personal pet peeves. You're okay. supposed to keep your eyes on the road. It's now illegal in Illinois to hold a phone up to your ear while you're driving, but it's perfectly legal to have to go through five different menus just to change your heating. It's crazy. So yes. All I want to say is, thankfully, the automotive manufacturers are giving up control and handing it over to people who know what they're doing. That's it. End of Yeah, so I just got an update uh, over the weekend that uh, makes the Spotify app, it's all Spotify now. It's not uh, somebody else's vision of what Spotify should be. It's, it's the Spotify app. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, that they do need to give up control to Android Auto or CarPlay or, or whatever. And... Uh, and go to hands-free stuff. I, I, I like the fact that I can just click the scroll, scroll wheel and say, play Tommy by the Who, and boom, it, it starts playing. That's I like really that. nice. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. It's, um, I, so my take, it's, they're still screwing it up. Mm -hmm. I get it. They're car companies, and now they're going to go to UX experts, and they're going to just stop. Just all you need is an interface for my, my stuff, my hardware. Give me an interface for my phone. Give me an interface for my tablet. Give me an interface for my whatever it is. You know, we're probably talking about two different chords. Yeah, I mean, yeah how, that's, how, that's how what cool. that Apple yeah. and Android comes in. Yeah, I mean, how cool would it be to actually be able to sync your, your, your phone with the car? And then while you're sitting in your living room, you could re, reconfigure your car's user interface with your phone. And then the next time they sync up, then now your your car's interface is exactly what you would want personally. Does that make sense? You know what I mean? Yeah, that would be cool. If you could control what apps and where they're at, that would be real cool. Just yeah. give me the screen. Blow the screen up to 7, 12, 17 inch, whatever my screen is, and then it'd just be the same. Turn off uh, texting and whatever else I'm not allowed to use while I drive. Yeah. No, I mean, I yeah. get, and I get that like in a Tesla, it's a different thing. It's all screen driven, uh, especially in the model three, it's very minimal. So, you know, it, it's all th that may be, may or may not be tougher. I, and I get it. That's, that's sort of the path that Tesla has chosen, but Ford's regularly been screwed by Microsoft, yeah. Toyota and in tune. Oh, and Lexus, please, for the love of God, it's horrible. And, and then you get the one where, like, like, he, like he said with the Cunix, where they have, it's perfect, it's ready to go, and they want to put their own manufacturer's sauce on it. Like, just right. leave it alone, leave it in the way yeah, it is, yeah, right. don't touch it. Right. Like, oh, yeah, we, we have to Lexicize it. Yeah. No, you don't. No, no. Just put you your don't. logo on it and be done. <laughs> I, I can't figure out how Lexus like does a worse so job at this than... Though. I just feel like there's so much stuff in most of these dashboards. It's... 
am I the only one for whom I would actually like, I, the only reason why I like this idea is because I want to get them to just focus on the drive. I want the controls to be very simple, very clear. And I really want minimal distractions in the cab where you're driving. I don't, I don't actually like most of the doodads and crap that I see in fancy cars. I'm really happy that all I deal with when I get into my base model is I put on the radio and that's it. It, it just feels like we're trying to make our mobile living rooms actually into our living rooms. There's too much stuff. You're too distracted. It's bad enough you have your phone. It's bad enough people are fiddling with map um, GPS stuff with their phones and things. I really wish people could just concentrate on driving. And I, I'm happy to see less things installed as, as, as entertainment because this is not entertainment. You got to drive. And that's just me. So even with autonomy, like you really, really, if, you're, if your stuff is already set up for somebody who can drive and not be distracted by it, then all you got to do is just add video and whatever. But don't, once your stuff is streamlined, it's, it's perfect for both people who are actively driving and people who are passengers in the car. Let's get it right, guys. There you go. Well, our final story tonight comes from Tony again. Oh, but I... this one might have a happy ending. Um, eh, you can no, hope. I'm... So just, okay, it was a shitty segue, I admit it. A $39 massage parlor. Um, so I'll let that sink in. <laughs> anyway, so what I found was, it, so it's, um, I found it in Ars Technica, but uh, it, they do give credit to Wired.com where, uh, where the story originally broke. But so when you think of electric vehicles, you, you tend to think of what we think of as like, uh, the skateboard, or in some cases, the battery is, you know, under a cargo area or, you know, behind the, the cab in some of these long range, um, you know, semis and stuff. Well, um, turns out that there is another way to make and um, place batteries around cars and other things. And that actually has to do with uh, when you when you when you look at how hold on I have to I have to come zoom so you can see my so I, I can see where my hands are so when you look at how batteries work right you got a positive and a negative and you have a separator in between and the the things flow across and then they charge and they come back and the battery flow well in a um, in a jelly roll battery of course you take this and you roll it up you know and you make a circle and and you flatten it and you make packs well it's it's when they're like this that we're we're worried about talking about here because what they're doing is they're taking these battery in in the this form and and find out that you can bend them and you can mold them and you can make complex shapes out of batteries which is really interesting and so by doing this you no longer have to take the skateboard and dedicate the entire skateboard to the battery pack instead you can do something that Volvo actually did, which was their hatchback. Believe it or not, a hatchback in a Volvo was a battery. And this is the, the back, the gate itself was a, a structural battery. It, it had the, the anode and the, the positive and the negative, and they simply shaped it and made it an actual component of the car. So what's, what's interesting here is battery manufacturers are looking into ways to shape batteries into components of the vehicles and other items in a way that batteries don't have to be solid little blocks or little rolls or things that have to be placed in very particular places, but they can actually mold them and make them part of the component itself, which I just think is is a, is a crazy idea but the more i read it and reread this article the more i realized it's actually really freaking cool did you guys get a chance to, to go through the article i didn't even see this one but it reminds me of something we saw like 10 years ago is this them bringing this a step closer or that's exactly it yes and in oh, okay. fact um <laughs> 
it goes back, yeah, 10 years ago, they were at Imperial College London. The engineering oh. um, team were looking into ways to take flat batteries and shape them into things. So yeah, it's, it's the exact same thing. Ah, cool. Glad to see, because that was, that was exciting uh, to see when they were first proposing it. They were saying, oh, it can't work, blah, blah, blah. It was never going to Apparently they've done the, the hatchback. That's cool. Yeah, they said the military has used it um, using carbon fiber for the electrodes, and um, yeah, they. It's 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 an interesting uh, concept in that, you, you know, they they use terms like you eliminate the battery, but you're not really eliminating the battery. You're simply incorporating the battery into the component that's being propelled by the battery itself. So in this case, the car becomes the matter. You don't have a car sitting on top of a battery. You kind of have to rethink your thinking when you're when you get into uh, structural batteries like this. Much the like an airplane wing thing. is is the fuel tank. Yeah, exactly. And and in this case, they use that exact same analogy in that the wing of the airplane could be the battery, not just the inside, but actually the skin itself could be part of the battery and the fuselage could be part of the battery. And you know, you, when you get into structural batteries like this, you look at every component of the, of the product itself and you realize that could hold a charge. This That's some crazy. science fiction stuff right there. I don't know how well <laughs> really that would is. ever, uh, you know, uh, go into high volume manufacturing, but uh, it's, it's really neat to think about we don't have to keep doing things the way we've always done them. Let's think outside of the box. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. It's really neat. And I, 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 I um, you know, I, I really suggest that people look into this, you know, research structural batteries and look at some of this cool stuff they're doing with, with these things. And, you know, yeah, it's, it's definitely a step forward. Um, and, you know, getting out of the, you know, the box, if you will, of, the battery and, and thinking broad, you know, broad, broad scale. You, when you when you think about this, something like this, instead of having a, um, you know, over over uh, Casey's shoulder, instead of having a, a battery pack like that, you could have the house is a battery. You know, you know. Think about it. I, 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 can, I can poke lots of holes in this, but I think Patrick's point is the important one. And it may pain me to admit that, but there it is anyway. I, I, can, be, I can be a bigger man here. No, I went through the same that, thought process of do I poke holes in this? <laughs> cooling and high voltage lines and jaws of life and where are the emergency guys cut? Right, no, right. Like, yeah. Better than just, yeah, you get, you get in a fender bender and you bend a frame. Oh, you bend it back off. No, it's a battery. You've cracked it and there's something spilling. Oh, my God. <laughs> now, I, I agree. But, but the important part of here is it's good to go to, to explore all these avenues. It's cool to, to look at this in a different way and go, wow, batteries don't have to be a shape or don't have to be a pouch or blah, blah, blah. They can be something else. You know, that's certainly brilliant. Yeah, and it's good to see. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. It, it, it's good to see people trying stuff again. I mean, uh, our, our, our world didn't get where it was from everybody doing the same thing the same way over and over again. We, they had people trying stuff out and inventing stuff. And sometimes it didn't work. And sometimes it was just a little bit better than the last thing. And somebody would build on that. And we just right. got to keep and Sometimes things hit a dead end, but then you yeah. have a technology breakthrough somewhere else. Like maybe some of these things wouldn't work at all with our current batteries. But when we have solid state batteries, oh, you know what? Now all the problems that we were running into those are easy to fix with this. Yeah. There yeah. you go. Okay. Yeah. I'm calling it. Let's do some shout outs and go home. I think we've been successful tonight. Mr. Green, I'm going to start with you this evening. So I, I did a couple of videos last week on the, on the channel. Uh, I spoke about uh, we had a new audio interface in our car. Uh, that one is not out yet uh, as far as the, the deep dive. I've got it all shot in my little gimbal camera, and that should be out hopefully before we move, but after we move, it'll be out within a week or two. But take a look at the quick look video at uh, youtube.com slash Casey Green. That's K-A-C-E-Y-G-R-E-E-N. And there's a couple other nice things out there that you might enjoy as well. 
always visit Casey's channel and like and subscribe while you're there. Subscribe and like, notifications, bell, ring, you know, all that stuff. Go ahead. Maybe even leave him a nasty comment because he probably doesn't get many of those. <laughs> I want to tell you, as someone who does get lots of those, Casey's missing out. Casey's yeah. missing out. I, I get some. <laughs> do you? Oh, I do get some. Yeah. yeah. I mean, not that I, yeah, getting picked on on YouTube is like, hello. It's a rite of passage. Yeah, <laughs> at, at best, yeah, yeah. It's just a daily thing. Uh, Mr. OEVA.org, I'm going to turn right. it over to you. OEVA.org, you got it. I'm a member of the Oregon Electric Vehicle Association. You can find us online there at the aforementioned URL. I also blog occasionally at carswithcords.net. And uh, I just want to thank all of you guys. This is just fun hanging out uh, in, in this new COVID world here. We do, I don't get to socialize a whole lot and uh, I'm working from home. And so uh, just, just uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm, I'm happy that you hung out with us and uh, I hope it brought you a little bit of joy like it did for me. Thanks. Wow. Nicely done, Patrick. I just Nicely hope everyone's done. at least six feet away from their screen. <laughs> You know yeah, we've got the ultimate physical distance going on here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Mr. Coughlin, what's the view from almost the northernmost point of this I show? I didn't know we were supposed to wear a mask during the <laughs> show. Oh, we were supposed to, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> uh, well, I, uh, certainly if you're watching this show at this point, please give us a thumbs up at this point. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. It costs you nothing and it helps us out and you're supporting the show. So please do so. Follow us on YouTube, follow us on Twitter and uh, that would be very helpful. We would appreciate that support. And, and just to mention it again, at the Tesla Life is uh, Mark's Twitter and where you get all the good Tesla inside, including the exciting Easter egg you posted today. <laughs> I, that's Cliffhanger. Cliff, cliffhanger. cliffhanger. It's yeah. going to be the biggest yeah. tweet ever. Right. <laughs> Georgia, Shirley. Well, the mic is yours. Don't call me Shirley. <laughs> Casey, stop stepping on my lines. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank everybody who watched the show today. And as you can tell, we're definitely in it a little bit of a jubilant mood here at, uh, at what drives us. Thank you for hanging out with us. Thank you uh, to our veterans. We honor your service. And everybody stay safe. It's Friday the 13th. Don't go nuts. It's not a bad thing, but you know how people get about these things. Hit like and subscribe. Grab yourself a nice soothing drink. Relax. Watch the rest of the shows. All right. Wow, Tony, only only you could possibly follow that with I, I I'm I'm speechless. Yeah, I don't know. Um find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash what drives us. If you use Flipboard, then uh, look for the What Drives Us magazine. And um I don't know if if you're watching this on YouTube, then like everyone said, you know, hit subscribe, like the video leave us a comment. We do ask that you leave us a comment because YouTube does put um, high priority to shows like ours that, that actually reply to comments. It's, they, they look for the interaction. So um, leave us a comment so that we can reply. That, that helps us in our own little way. If you're listening to it, um, then you maybe you found us on Spotify or Google Play, TuneIn, iTunes. Um, make sure and subscribe there and um, tell a friend. And even, even if your friend is your dog, I, you know, just tell somebody and then uh, create an account for your dog and let them <laughs> like and subscribe because dogs get lonely too. And, and we'll, we'll yeah. take the extra dog numbers. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, I, is, it, is it like seven to one, I think, in, in dog likes? I think if you get one dog like, yeah, you get like seven human likes. Seven, yeah. Seven, yeah. Yeah. I think that's how it works. That is sweet. Somebody demands a recount. <laughs> thank you, Tony. Thank you very much. Well, as always, I want to thank Michael Mannering for his amazing theme music. Uh, you can visit him at manthing.com. Uh, do stop in and uh, buy something, you know, uh, buy a song. Just don't buy anything on CD Baby, for God's sakes. Don't buy anything on CD Baby. Buy it on iTunes or 
something else. There's um, mm-hmm. play going on here. Absolutely. And uh, as always, uh, I want to thank uh, George McKenzie, Tony Schaefer, Mark Coughlin, Casey Green, and of course, my friend Patrick Connor for uh, being the best panel I could possibly hope for. Thank you so much. Uh, and as always, I want to thank all of you. You are the reason we do the show. But like Patrick said, we also kind of like hanging out with each other. So, <laughs> you know, yeah, we do it if you didn't watch. But we're happier that you watch. We want you to watch. That We want you to like and we subscribe. Like all of that fun stuff. So, uh, yeah, do that. And um, naturally, tune in next week and find out what drives us? Maybe. Maybe we'll keep teasing it. Have a great week, everybody. See ya. Stay charged. Stay safe.